Welcome to another video. Today we are doing the two knights problem. So far this is the most interesting problem in the introductory problem set. Um, mostly because this involves just a little bit more maths than the other problems. Um, so just take a second to read the problem and pause the video. Um, so to pause both on the same page, what this question is essentially asking us is um, what are the total number of ways to place two knights on a chessboard such that um, they don't attack each other. So there's two parts to this question. What are the total number of ways to place two knights on a chessboard? So we'll handle that part first. Um, oh, and it's an n by n chessboard. Well, in this case, a k by k chessboard, to be specific. Let's say we just have one knight. I'll say an n by n chessboard. What are the total number of ways to place two knights on an n by n chessboard? Well, the answer is just n squared for one knight. It's just n squared because you can place it everywhere. There are, there are no limits. But once you introduce a, a second knight, a second knight, um, it's n squared minus one. This is because you can you can still place the second knight everywhere everywhere on the chessboard. However, the first knight already occupies a position, so it's that's what the minus one is for. It subtracts that extra position. So if there was a third knight, it'd be n squared minus two. If there was a fourth knight, it would be n squared minus three. So it just follows that same pattern. Um, this would this would hold true, so n squared n squared minus one. This would hold true if the pieces weren't identical. But because the question is about two knights specifically, um, you have to divide this value by two according to the laws of uh, identical permutations. You have to uh, divide that number by two. And that gives you the total number of permutations of placing two knights on an n by n chessboard. Okay, now for the second part. If, if so this doesn't give us a final answer because this gives us every single position. But we wanna find um, every position such that the, knight, the knights aren't attacking each other. So we want to subtract a value. So this is a total value and you want to subtract a value from this. Uh, that value is the, it's the total number of ways uh, two knights can attack each other. Okay, so how do we find this? Um, the best way to see this is just to visualize it. Um, so if we have a chessboard here, a three by three chessboard. Um, okay. Um, so the question is how can we find out if a knight attacks another knight? Well, if you play chess before, you know it, it makes an L shape. So if, if the knight was here, it could attack a knight here, and it could attack a knight here. And it, um, what you have to notice is the region of space that it uses up when it attacks the other knight. So if it goes from here, it uses up a 2x3 um, region. And if it goes from here to here, it uses a 3 by 2 region. So, knowing that, uh, what you need to find out is how many 3 by 2 and 2 by 3 regions are there in this 3 by 3 space. Um, so, it's actually quite easy. So let's take another color. Um, Let's, let's just deal with, so we want to find, let's deal with two by three regions first. 
So you have a region like this. And we have another one um, here. <laughs> okay, uh, so this is the maximum number of uh, two by three regions you can have in a three by three chessboard. So how do you go from three to two? Well, you just do three minus one and you can generalize three minus one to n minus one for any chessboard. Okay, so that's how many ways we can um, add a two by three region to, uh, towards the um, towards the columns of the chessboard. So if we had a, a larger chessboard that goes over here, we could move this one more time to this region here. But we also want to know how many times can this region go downwards. So we've uh, we know it can go uh, along the columns. N, uh, n minus one times. Well, here it takes up the entire region, um, so it can only occupy this space one time. It uses up the full space uh, vertically, obviously. So then you have to ask yourself, how do you go from three to one? Um, you do that by doing three minus two. So, although that could just be guesswork as well. So what we'll do is we'll expand this. Um, we'll make this a four by four chessboard. And we'll do the same thing. So we'll start uh, with the columns. So we have one here. Another one here. And another one here. So this is a four by four chessboard and the number of um, the number of times we, uh, the number of regions we occupy moving along the columns is three, which um, holds true to our previous rule, which was n minus one. Uh, so four minus one equals three. And um, for the and, and once we're going down vertically, we can test this again. Which color do I use? We can go down one more time. So we we can occupy two regions vertically, and that gives us two regions in a four by four space, which also holds true in our previous rule, which was n minus two which is four minus two equals two. So we know um, horizontally, it occupies n minus one regions and um, vertically, it holds n minus two regions. So knowing that, we know that the total number of regions for a two by three region is n minus one times n minus two. Um, another thing I should have mentioned is, I, I kind of just skipped this, um, so that's a, that is a 2x3 region. For a 3x2 region, it's also the same thing. Let me just show you quickly. So. Um, okay, so for a three by two region, yeah, I'm not gonna go over the rule again, but essentially, it's it's exactly the same as n minus one and n minus two, except it's inverted. So uh, vertically for, for this one, it's n minus one. And um, horizontally, it's n minus two. Um, the reason, I believe there's a proof for that, but the reason is, is just cause in a square, the symmetry is the same. 
it occupies the same amount of space in total, even though the order is different. So the um, this is for two by three. Not so three by two. The values are minus two times and minus one. Um, and these two values are exactly the same as we previously mentioned, so we don't have to type them twice, it's just two times um, and minus one and minus two. Yep. Um, oh yeah, there's a, another thing I forgot to mention. Um, Uh, let's say you have a region here, like this. A knight here can attack a knight here. But that doesn't mean um, the total number, number for each region is one. There's actually another way of attacking a knight and it's from, it's from here to here. So for each 2x3 region or 3x2 region, there are two number of ways of um, attacking a knight. So we double this value essentially. So it's 2 times 2. Oh, it's just 4 and minus 1 and minus 2. And that's the total number of ways two knights can attack each other. Um, and to answer the question, we want to subtract this value from this value. Um, yeah, and that should give you the correct answer in the end. I hope that made sense. I don't know if I explained that correctly or explained that well. n times n times n times n times n minus one and then divide by two um, and the attacking positions is simply just um, carry out the total minus the attacking. And yeah, the code is pretty short, but that's because we've um, just com compacted all the maths into two lines. Uh, okay, let's test this. Six twenty eight ninety six two five two five five zero one zero five six one eight four eight. Okay, nice. Yeah, so it works. Cool. My next video is going to be. Well, I'm gonna do the next problem, obviously. But my next video is going to be on C plus uh, plus competitive programming templates. I'm gonna go over um, what macros are, how macros work and uh, essentially how to write different macros that just speed up the coding process when you're um, solving problems. So yeah, thanks for watching and see you next time.